This is Mohammed Afman, the Director of Advanced Endoscopy at Baylor College of Medicine. In this keynote lecture, we'll discuss endoscopic submucosal dissection and endoscopic mucosal resection for early stage esophageal cancer. We'll quickly discuss the epidemiology of esophageal cancer. Esophageal cancer ranks sixth among cancer mortality worldwide. Esophageal squamous cell carcinoma is more common throughout the world. In the United States, esophageal adenocarcinoma is the predominant type. In this slide, we have the rate ratios of several cancers since 1975 till 2000. As we see here, esophageal cancer, and in particular esophageal adenocarcinoma, is one of the fastest growing tumors in the last four decades. There was 17,990 new cases of esophageal cancer in the United States in 2013, although there was 15,200 deaths in the same year. The five-year survival for esophageal cancer is so low, it's almost close to 18%. Poor prognosis is mainly due to the late presentation with metastasis in around 50% of esophageal cancer patients. For that reason, early recognition of esophageal cancer is crucial in improving the overall survival rate. In the past, open surgery was an acceptable management option for esophageal precancerous agent. With time, laparoscopic surgery replaced open surgery, and now endoscopy is another new treatment for early stages esophageal cancer. As we see here, in terms of invasiveness, open surgery is more invasive than laparoscopic surgery, and endoscopy is less invasive than both approaches. In this slide, we are discussing some of the most commonly used methods for endoscopic assessment of early esophageal cancer. Chromoendoscopy is traditionally used for assessing early esophageal cancer. Digital chromoendoscopy, or what we call a narrowband imaging or eye scan is also other approach which used by the endoscope through a filter which filter only narrowband lights uh, which will highlight the superficial blood vessels. Endoscopic ultrasound is another modality, confocal laser endomicroscopy and volumetric laser endomicroscopy. For the purpose of this keynote lecture we are not going to discuss all these techniques in details but in the next few slides, I will be illustrating some of these techniques. In this video, I will illustrate the technique of chromoendoscopy. That's an early esophageal cancer with embedded esophagus consistent with adenocarcinoma. After examining the lesion, we'll spray the area with methylene blue. Methylene blue will be absorbed with enteric epithelium and not squamous epithelium. This will result in highlighting and defining the border of the lesion during endoscopic examination as we see in the video now. In this video will illustrate the usefulness of endoscopic ultrasound in staging esophageal cancer. As we see here, this is an esophageal cancer which is involving more than half of the circumference of the esophagus and is causing significant narrowing. With endoscopic ultrasound examination, we will find that this lesion is involving all the layers of the esophagus. In addition, there are multiple lymph nodes noted consistent with T3N1 tumor. Volumetric laser scanning is novel balloon-based OCT imaging technique. With the system, the optical component of the catheter are positioned within the esophageal lumen via balloon center probe placed over a guide wire under endoscopic control. The entire portion of esophageal mucosa in contact with the balloon is scanned in a circumferential and helical manner when the balloon is inflated. During VLE examination, Barrett esophagus can be recognized by the enlarged and branched uh, ducts which could be seen in the subsurface area. Also, there will be loss of the layering uh, which is typically noticed in this normal squamous epithelium.
So what is endoscopic mucosa resection? It is simply endoscopic removal of premalignant tissue or sometimes early cancers using a specialized snare or caps. Lesions are usually confined to the mucosa when we are doing EMR. Typically, EMR can be done anywhere along the mucosal surface of the GI tract, but most commonly it's used for flat or sessile conic polyps, nodular lesion of the esophagus such as paratesophageal nodule, gastric polyps or gastric carcinoid, and duodenal adenomas or duodenal carcinoid. EMR can be achieved by snare resection. Submucosal injection is usually used to raise the lesion prior to snare resection, which is usually done mostly for flat polyps in the colon. But also, we can use cap and suction, and often ligation, to trap the tissue, and then use a snare to cut above or below the ligator band. Steps of performing EMR include lesion assessment, as we discussed earlier, then submucosal insection in some situations, then cap utilization, then specialized snare resection, then inspection, the area of the polypectomy for any residual. Most often we use APC for treatment of this residual. And if we find any defect after EMR, Closure is attempt with claps. In this video, I will illustrate the technique of multi-band mucosectomy. We have a lesion within a bird esophagus suspicious for high-grade dysplasia. The lesion will be suctioned within the cap, and then one band will be deployed to ligate the lesion. After that, we'll utilize a snare to cut the lesion. The location of the snare can be above or below the band. As we see in the video, we chose to put it under the band in this case. Then blended cut current would be used to dissect this area. After dissection, careful inspection of the EMR bed is done to ensure that there is no bleeding or minimal perforation. The process can be repeated again for doing EMR of the adjacent area next to the lesion if needed. We'll shift gear now to discuss ESD. ESD stands for endoscopic submucosal dissection. It is a technique for resection of premalignant or malignant lesion in M block, and in some occasion, it is an alternative to surgery. ESD will allow M block resection of the lesion regardless of its size. Compared to EMR, it has a higher curative rate. And also ESD allows resection when EMR is not feasible. One of the most important concepts of ESD is R0 resection. R0 resection stands for resection for cure or complete remission. In this situation, the peripheral and deep margins of the lesion are negative for any tumor. In R1 resection, there is microscopic residual tumor. In R2 resection, there is a macroscopic residual tumor. The plane of dissection in ESD is the submucosa. Usually dissection will be done in the middle third of the submucosa to avoid blood vessels in the upper third of the submucosa and also avoid being close to the muscle as in the lower third of the submucosa. Curative resection after ESD is dependent upon the presence or absence of lymphovascular invasion. Lymphovascular invasion is varied according to the GI site, type of the tumor, and the depth of the tumor. As we can see in this table, esophageal squamous cell carcinoma has almost 0% risk of lymphovascular invasion 
if it is M1 tumor. And it is up to 50% if the lesion is submucosal or in the deep submucosa. For esophageal adenocarcinoma, mucosal tumor have very low risk of lymphovascular invasion, less than 3%, and once the lesion is deeper in the submucosa, that risk can increase up to 40%. For that reason, the absolute indications for ESD and esophageal lesion is lesion confined to the mucosa. ESD is performed with a standard single accessory channel endoscope. Carbon dioxide is used for insufflation. Special equipment necessary for ESD are transparent cap, submucosal injection needle, and submucosal injection solutions, ESD knives, coagulation devices, and endoclips. Typical ESD is accomplished in a stepwise manner including marking the lesion, incision, and submucosal dissection with simultaneous hemostasis. In regard to marking the lesion, Absolute delineation and definition of the border of esophageal neoplasm is crucial. Chromoendoscopy using several dyes or MPI with magnification are often used for pre-procedural assessment. Once the margin of the lesion are fully visualized, an ergon plasma coagulation or ESD knife using soft coagulation current can be applied to mark the resection borders with dots around the lesion. After the resection borders are marked, Fluids can be injected beneath the mucosa by a submucosal injection needle. Circumferential incision is then made along the dots marked around the region. The incision between the marking dots connect to form a circle which separates the lesion from normal mucosa. Submucosal dissection is then accomplished to separate the lesion from the underlying uh, muscle layer. Hemostasis can also be done for any bleeding blood vessels, and after removing the lesion completely, careful inspection of the ESD bed is done to rule out perforation and close any possible microperforation seam. In this video, I will illustrate the process of performing ESD. We have a lesion at the GE junction with high grade dysplasia. The lesion is not that uh, obvious uh, initially, so we are doing chromoendoscopy. And after doing chromoendoscopy, we are using soft coagulation current to make dots around the lesion, followed by performing circumferential incision. We are using a dual knife during that video. We carefully dissect the lesion around the dots. Once we have a circumferential incision, we'll start the process of dissecting the lesion from the underlying muscle layer. We can see here that we are using the dual knife to dissect the lesion carefully. We have to pay attention to the small blood vessels and apply coagulation current to avoid bleeding. And once we complete the dissection, we'll inspect the ESD bed for any small perforations or lesions. In regards to the outcomes of ESD, this is a Japanese experience of 26 patients who underwent ESD for esophageal adenocarcinoma. The mean procedure time was 93 minutes. M-block resection was achieved in 100% of the patient, with pathological M-block resection or RO0 resection in 85% of the patient. One patient had delayed bleeding, no patient had any perforations, but four patients had esophageal stenosis. The follow-up after ESD was up to 33 months. In regards to the outcome of EMR versus ESD, this is a prospective trial of 40 patients who underwent ESD versus EMR. The mean procedural time for ESD was significantly higher than EMR, 54 minutes compared to 22 minutes. Complete resection of the target area was achieved in all patients, 
but M block resection was significantly higher in SD. Also, the length of the segment removed by ESD was significantly longer than the one removed by EMR, 29 millimeter compared to 18 millimeter. Perforation rate was slightly higher than ESD compared to EMR, but it did not reach any statistical significance difference. In conclusion, endoscopic resection of early esophageal cancer is feasible and safe. EMR and ESD are acceptable treatment modalities for early esophageal cancer. ESD requires technical expertise, but it is associated with higher rates of m block RO, and curative resections. Sufficient training is crucial to ensure safe and high quality resections. Thank you.